In our last video, we showed you how we replaced our RV's propane detector, a simple but important routine maintenance task that needs to be tended to from time to time. We did it in real time to show you exactly how long it took for us to do the job. It's that simple. Today, we're gonna to do another fairly routine maintenance item that comes up from time to time, and that is replacing the valve in our shower control. Now, we're not gonna make this exactly a how-to because every shower control is a little bit different. We have Delta single handle control here on our shower. We'll show you how this one's done, but of course, the directions come with each shower valve replacement. Now, first of all, whenever you're working on plumbing, obviously, you've gotta shut the water off outside at the pedestal. Now, the first thing we need to do to replace this is to pry the top off the handle itself, which is done with a flat blade screwdriver. Then we can take a Phillips head screwdriver, take that screw out that holds the handle on, and pull it off. Then there's a chrome sleeve, which we pull off so that we can access the control valve. The valve itself is held in place by this bonnet nut, and that's gonna be removed with a large slip joint pliers. Once we take that off, we can use a flat blade screwdriver again to pry lightly against the top of the valve and simply pull it out. Now it's important to note with this particular type of valve that there's a hot side and a cold side. And if you put it in upside down, when you first turn it on, the water is gonna run hot and then cold. So it's very important to note that the hot side is marked with an H and that side in most showers, including ours, faces the left as most hot water faucets are on the left-hand side. So when you pull it out, note which side the H is on, and then you'll want to put the new controller in oriented the same way. In this case, again, with the H, the hot side over to the left. All we'll have to do now is slide that controller back into the housing, screw the bonnet nut back in place, Slide the chrome sleeve back over the assembly. Put the handle back on. Tighten the Phillips head screw that holds it in place. And pop our cap back in. Now we'll turn the water back on at the pedestal and make sure we don't have a leak. The only other important thing to do here is to turn the water on to confirm that Cold is cold and hot is hot. Again, if we put the valve in upside down, when you first turn it on, it's gonna be hot first and then all the way around to cold, which obviously isn't the way it's supposed to be. So turn the water on so that it runs cold, turn it further around and make sure it runs hot. That way you'll know you have it in correctly. Now your faucet may be different. If you've got other than a Delta or a different model of Delta faucet, it probably is gonna require slightly different technique. Most of these cartridges are just this easy to replace. Some of it will depend on whether you have a two handle or a single handle control or exactly how it's set up. Every manufacturer has a different cartridge. If you have a Moen faucet or some other brand, it's almost certainly gonna have a dedicated cartridge that has to be purchased from the manufacturer. So if you're having a dripping faucet, hope this tip gives you an idea how easy it might be to replace the cartridge. Stay dry, don't let water go down your gray tank unnecessarily, and as always, safe travels and thanks for watching. For those of you who stayed here to the end, we have a quick little bonus tip for you. So you know when you see a professional who does this kind of work, you know, put showers and tubs in, they make those beautiful, perfect lines of caulk they make it look like nothing. And we aren't that good at that because we don't do it that often. And we always end up with kind of a, an ugly caulk line that's not very smooth. Well, here's a little tip on how to do it like a professional, even if you only do it once every few years. Painter's tape. And you can see we've put two rows of painter's tape right here, two lines down the shower door. Now this isn't normally a place where you'd need to caulk because 
the glass is permanently installed into the frame of the door. But over time, this RV is 14 years old, we've started to have some leaks where the glass goes into the door. And that's because the uh, frame around there, the seal has stiffened a little bit. And rather than replace the door, about every several years, every seven or eight years maybe, this is gonna require caulking. So while we're doing it today, I thought we'd show you our tip for how we make perfect straight lines of caulk with nice perfect edges, like a pro, but without the skills of a pro. Now first off, we not only use painter's tape on here, but we use really high quality caulk. This is designed to resist mildew and have to be replaced less often. So all we've done here is decide how wide we want the bead to be and put the lines of tape down each side. You'll also notice that I'm wearing gloves for this one because we want to make this as quick and easy a cleanup as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of caulk down here and then I'm going to smear it into place with my finger, pushing it fairly firmly so that it pushes into the corner and against the glass on one side and the aluminum frame on the other. And then the trick is I'm going to immediately remove the painter's tape right away. If I wait and the caulk starts to set up and skin over, when I pull it off, it's going to tear it up. So the trick here is put the tape on in nice straight lines from the uh, deciding how wide you want the bead to be. That's how wide you are from the corner here with each of the pieces of tape. Do a nice smooth bead with a gloved hand, pull the tape up and throw it all away and you won't have any real cleanup to do at all. The bead will be perfect, your hands will be clean, you won't have to try and get the silicone off the gloves. Anyway, I'm going to do this live on camera. John is going to pan down here and see if I can do this. Obviously this is one take, kind of like we did with our propane detector replacement last week. So here we go. I've already cut the uh, top of the uh, tube here to the size I want and pierce the inside. So I am about to get this up for our attempt here. We're gonna try this live on camera and it's either gonna be a tip or a blooper reel. We'll see how that goes, right? <laughs> Winner or epic fail. All right, so let's go. We're gonna put this right up in here. Start getting our bead up. There we go. And nice bead in here. And we'll use enough that when we push on this, it's going to spread out to the tape. So we're gonna use a little extra. We don't wanna go crazy with it because we don't want a giant batch to gush out of here with this when we're done. But you can see, I'm not really making much of an attempt here to make this perfect. All I wanna do is fill it in so that when I go over it with my finger, it will push it ahead of me. I'll be pushing a bead ahead of me as I go. So let's go here. Again, no real, uh, not doing a very good job at making it look good, but it won't matter in the end. The trick here is all going to be in sliding it along with my finger and then taking the tape off right away. So let's go all the way down here, down to the bottom. And in case you can't uh, tell behind me, the uh, we're going to be doing the handle on the uh, shower as well. So we've got that all taped off in a curve over there. Okay, that is pretty messy. But as long as I don't overshoot the tape, I'm good. So let's come back up here, set that down, take our finger, push it in here, and nicely put that in. And I can see that's coming right over onto the tape on both sides. Run it right down here. Look how perfectly smooth that is. And as long as it's out onto the tape on both sides, I'm good. Because then when I pull it up, I'll get my nice smooth bead. I'm just going to jump down to the bottom here, do the same thing. Okay, and you see I did a pretty good job. There's not that much on my finger here. I did a pretty good job of getting that off. And now, before this sets up, we immediately remove the tape. And just ball that up as you go so you don't make a big mess because that's got fresh caulk on it. Take that down. Oh, I did a good job. If I do say so myself. 
and there we are. And we have a perfect bead. And I don't know if you can take a zoom in on that. We have an absolutely perfect bead, just like a pro there. Nicely into the corner. Can't do much better than that. And if my cameraman gets a real nice tight shot on that, you'll see what a lovely job I did. So there's your little tip of the day, and you can see that just by taking these gloves off like this, no cleanup, and I'm done.